Alright, so the Eagles may have just revealed their plans for one of their most exciting rookies as a report just came out that potentially leaked how the birds plan to utilize Cooper DeGene and he himself pretty much confirmed it to be true during an interview. So is this the right move? Also on top of that, star cornerback Darius Slay just gave us a shocking update on his future as he hinted at the possibility of his time in Philly coming to an end soon. Meanwhile, we just got our first look at the Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley duo out on the field together while Kenny Gainwell just gave some controversial comments on the Eagles collapse last year. Plus, this Eagles rookie looks like he might turn out to be a very unique weapon for the Eagles offense. So let's talk about all that and we won't waste any time. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so let's start this off by talking a little bit about last season as Eagles running back Kenny Gainwell was on former FSU and current CFL DB JV and Elliott's podcast. And during the episode, he was asked about the Eagles collapse and he gave an answer that has gotten some mixed reaction from fans. What do you think it was that caused that, that sudden change? Um, uh, I think it was a, a connection piece you know you know uh i say teams like the chiefs bro are like well connected you know upstairs and downstairs you know you know front office and the locker room like everybody's connected um when you got that connection piece bro everything just click when you know you got guys that's not talking to each other then you know you, you never know what's going on, you know, so like if we all sit down and talk to each other and find out what's going on or we find out what we need to do on the field yeah. to, you know, get this thing going, then, you know, we'll be good. So, I don't know. I mean, I think there's definitely truth in what Gainwell is saying. It certainly did seem like the team from the players to the coaches and the front office all were not as connected as they should have been last year. But from this clip, it's just kind of hard to know if Kenny is talking about anybody specifically. Now, there's a lot of people saying that he was talking about the coordinators and them not communicating or committing to getting better enough. But we don't really know for sure if that's who exactly he was talking about specifically. And then there are also people who are reacting to this clip negatively, saying that Kenny just needs to be quiet and whatever. So, I don't know. I mean, personally, I'm not not really too bothered by this I honestly just don't care that much about it because i'm past last season at this point but you guys can give me your thoughts what do you guys think about what he said but now just looking towards the future and the running back position this year and i think it's safe to say that kenny g probably won't have too big of a role this year with saquon obviously coming in and being a workhorse type of back so that'll definitely reduce the amount of touches that gainwell gets and honestly i just have to assume that kenny could be on his way out after this year with barkley being under contract for three seasons and the birds just drafting will shipley in the fourth round so i'll be interested to see exactly what type of role Kenny has in the offense or on this team this year, but we obviously all know that Saquon Barkley is the guy for the Eagles at running back. Speaking of which, we actually just got our first official look at him out on the field practicing as the Eagles social media team put this video out of Jalen Hurts handing the ball off to Saquon during voluntary offseason workouts, and even though this video isn't impressive and it really just tells us absolutely nothing, it's honestly still just so exciting to see not just Saquon, but the duo of Saquon and Jalen Hurts together on the field practicing, and I think it's safe to say that assuming they stay healthy, healthy, these two are going to be a special duo for the foreseeable future for the birds. I mean, Saquon Barkley is obviously one of the best running backs in the NFL today. His vision, athleticism, and just pure skill is undeniable, and he's shown just how good he is for years behind a crappy Giants offensive line. So just imagine how he's going to look behind this Eagles offensive line, and that's made even better by the fact that Jalen Hurts is obviously a threat as a runner, and the Eagles will surely heavily utilize the RPO like they've done in recent years, which is just going to make the defense have to choose between the threat of Saquon Barkley and then Jalen Hurts running the football and that's not even mentioning the threat of Jalen pulling the ball and throwing it and speaking of which it's also just going to help so so much to have Saquon in the backfield in terms of just passing the football in general because defenses are going to have to honor Saquon more and just play a little closer to the line of scrimmage so that'll definitely allow for more opportunities for Jalen Hurts and the Eagles elite wide receivers to take the top off the defense so yeah again overall I'm just so so excited to watch this duo I think they're going to be amazing and I just cannot wait for their first game together and something else that I'm also excited about is the rookie wide receiver Anaya Smith, as even though we didn't get to see him during minicamp because he's still coming back from an injury, there's plenty of reasons to think that he can help elevate this Eagles offense even further and fill a much needed hole. And in addition to my excitement about him, Nick Sirianni also seems excited, as Sirianni himself did a good amount of studying Anais leading up to the draft, and during his post-draft presser, he had this to say about him. When you kind of watch a guy for obviously when I'm starting to watch a guy you know how he's watched him probably three or four times by the time I, I get to watch him one time but it's always fun to go into his office and be like hey I love this guy and uh, I think that was definitely a guy that that we did that with um, you know he, he's he's his ability to to run after the catch his ability to you know get in and out of breaks um, I think you know he's extremely tough I love that about him 
Um, you know, his that, that's really what sticks out. Catches the ball really well, um, and, and so those are the things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that really stick out. And it and it, it's going to be fun to see how we can get him the football and uh, different ways that he can contribute. I've really believed this ever since I started doing more research on Smith since the birds drafted him. I really do think that Anaya Smith has a fantastic chance of winning the wide receiver three job this year because not only does he have great run after the catch ability and just all the great things that Sirianni said about him, but he's also a very versatile player in the sense that he was a running back at a certain point in college, so in addition to him being lined up in the slot and just straight up playing the wide receiver position, I think he's a guy that you could put in the backfield, you could run end arounds to him, you could also motion him all over the field, as we should expect to see more of that in Kellen Moore's new offense, and he can just overall be a great gadget guy that is another unique weapon for this Eagles offense. And that's not even mentioning the value that he brings as a return man, so yeah, overall, the more time that goes by, the more excited I am about this Anaya Smith pick, but what do you guys think? But now, continuing on talking about the rookies, one of them just got a very unique shout out by way of the United States Congress as Ohio Representative Marcy Capture just praised Quinion Mitchell. Mr. Speaker, I rise to celebrate and recognize Quinion Mitchell, a cornerback from the University of Toledo. Quinion was recently selected by the Philadelphia Eagles with the 22nd overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. Northwest Ohio is undeniably proud of Mr. Mitchell. He became the first Toledo Rockets selected in the first round in 31 years. And I want to congratulate, with heartfelt congratulations, Quinion Mitchell for his remarkable achievements. He truly embodies the spirit of excellence that the University of Toledo and Northwest Ohio strive to achieve. We all know Quinion will continue to make us proud as he shines on the national stage. Go Rockets! Go Quinion, go Birds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back. Look, before any of you internet politicians come at me, I do not know anything about this woman, and honestly, I really don't care what she supports or just any of that. I, I, I could not care less. I just personally think it's so cool that she shouted out Quinion like that and gave us a go Birds there. Like, that was pretty sick. And I also think that if we're just going to look at the Eagles and who may end up starting at cornerback this year, Quinion has a very real chance. And honestly, whether he does or not all has to do with what the Eagles are going to do with James Bradbury, as there's been a ton of speculation that the birds can move on from him after his horrible performance last year, while some do believe that they should give him another chance, although I definitely think that group is probably a lot smaller. But now, truth be told, I don't really know what the Eagles are going to do. Not a ton of information has come out regarding that. But how he did speak of cornerback as a need that they wanted to address during one of his draft pressers. So if you want to read into any bit of information that we got, that certainly to me sounds like the Eagles could very well move on from Bradbury. And honestly, I think that that would be the right move. I mean, the Birds have a ton of young talent at cornerback right now. And cutting Bradbury post June 1st, I think would be about a $10 million dead cap hit, which definitely sucks. But at the same time, the Eagles can afford it right now with the amount of cap space they have. So I think that they should move on from JB and start Quinion, but what do you guys think? But now, switching over to the Eagles' other rookie cornerback, we just got a report yesterday revealing the Eagles' plans for Cooper DeGene, as of course, one of the most exciting things about DeGene is his versatility and his ability to play outside cornerback, inside cornerback, and also safety, and a lot of people and Eagles fans have actually assumed that DeGene would end up playing the safety position rather than the cornerback position, but apparently, at least to start out, that's not true. As ESPN's Jeremy Fowler said, quote, they will likely start him on the outside and see what he can handle from there and are cognizant of giving him too many responsibilities too early despite his versatility. And then today, the Gene made an appearance on Up and Adams where he pretty much confirmed that although he's willing to play any position, at least so far, the birds have mostly played him at one of the two cornerback positions and that's the plan moving forward. Yeah, I've really talked all three positions um, with them. You know, I worked mostly the nickel and, and corner position at at rookie mini camp, but there's there's been talks about about safety um, in the pre-draft and uh, returning as well. Um, you know, so where wherever they put me, I'll I'll be ex I'll be excited. Um, but I'm excited for for the opportunity. You know, to to start at the corner position. It's up to you. Sure. So corner over safety is what you want. That's that's where I'm that's where I'm starting out. Yeah. The nickel in the corner position, yeah. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, I personally like it. It sounds like Fowler's report of strictly outside cornerback may not be entirely truthful just based on what DeGene said there. And I just think that moving forward, having DeGene at either inside or outside corner instead of safety might be the smart move considering the amount of uncertainty surrounding Avante Maddox and James Bradbury. And that's on top of the fact that Slay might be gone soon as well. So having DeGene be able to play outside or inside would be great because he could start in either of those positions alongside Quinnell Mitchell. And then one of Isaiah Rogers, Keely Ringo, or Eli Ricks could start at the other spot whenever the time comes. 
But just going back to Darius Slay and the point I made about him, the only reason I say that his departure from the Eagles could be soon is because he himself recently said that, as he made an appearance on MLB The Show YouTuber Your Friend Kyle's channel, where he said this. How many more years are you in, uh, are you in Philly? Uh, I'm gonna guarantee, well, I'm gonna guarantee money one more, but then after that, okay. I, become, I ain't no, I won't become a free agent, but you know how that business is. Yeah, 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 of course. They probably, they don't wanna, yeah, they ain't gonna wanna pay me that high ass cap at the end, so they'll probably, you know, do a little something that we might work out. Yeah. I wanna play 13, I wanna play 13 to 14 years, so and at least one more or two more. Okay, for sure. Yeah, didn't call it a day. So, it sounds like Slay is certainly getting close to retirement. I mean, you heard him say there that he wants to play one or two more years, but at the end of this year, he knows that the Eagles are not going to want to deal with a huge cap hit in his last year of his contract, so they could either rework the deal, or that might just be it for Slay and Philly. So, we better enjoy this year with Slay, because it sounds like this might actually be it. And also, just moving on, I want to wish Lane Johnson a happy birthday, as the Eagles legend and future Hall of Famer turns 34 years old today, so shout out to him, and he's yet another guy who's towards the end of his career, so we better enjoy him while we got him. Okay, so I'm going to be continuing to cover the Eagles throughout the rest of this entire offseason, so if you don't want to miss any more videos just like this, make sure you subscribe, and also really, really importantly, turn on notifications so you're notified instantly when one of these videos is uploaded, and also, while you're at it, make sure you drop a like to show some support, I'd greatly appreciate it, and also leave a comment down below just regarding anything that I talked about in this video, and if you want to watch another video going more in-depth on Eagles Rookie Minicamp, among other things, you can check this out right here. And now with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one, guys, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.